Matthew Smith, Dave Zed, hanging out. This is amazing. So Dave has been hanging out with this. We're having a wonderful time. It's beautiful out here on the ranch now. The weather's yeah, nice. Yeah. Summer's over. Dave brought the cool weather with him, and we're <laughs> absolutely grateful for that. Uh, Matthew, you are hanging out with this. We are going to talk some amazing shit tonight. We actually have some incredibly cool stuff. You have been doing some amazing research. I heard also that you met up with a dear friend of ours, uh, Kelly Harding, out there in Washington. Mm. You guys went on some beach he showed you. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about that and about yourself while we're at it? Uh, my name is Matthew Smith. Um, I run a, a YouTube channel that is currently semi on pause as I deal with some health issues, which we can or cannot talk about later as, as we wish. Um, and I, I design, I'm an architect. I design primarily roundhouses, uh, which is a whole lot of fun. Um, uh, my website is dreamdesignbuild.org. Um, wooden yurts, basically tricked out wooden yurts in really cool locations all over the country. And uh, that's what I do for my bread and butter. And then on the side, I research old world architecture and ether energy and just all the fun stuff. And uh, yeah, I get to rap with guys like yourselves and it brings me a lot of joy. So thank you. This is awesome. This is great to be here. Yeah, same. So what did you and Kelly find out there? And where were you guys at on this beach uh, that she took you to? Well, we never made it to the beach together. Um, that's kind of on pause currently as well. But you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I went down to her house. And so Kelly is like third, fourth generation Seattleite. Uh, she's you know, she knows this town, she's Seattle and she's just super cool, man. And she invited me, she's been following my work on marvelous old world. And, uh, and then you put us in touch and, um, we finally got together. And so what she has dug up on the beach specifically, I think it's at Karkik park, which is, um, on the Puget sound it's North of downtown. Uh, by a couple of miles and it is on the western like the western shore of seattle facing puget sound mm. and she dug up and there's a railroad going by there too so between the beach and and up by the tracks she's dug up uh a bunch of melted bricks like full-on melted bricks hmm. and they just look like you know just putty dripping like frozen in time and what she uh what she hypothesizes is that they came from the 1889 great fire in seattle that wiped out downtown seattle and makes sense to me because you know that's been a, a real focus of my research uh this past year and um and it, it just brings up a lot of really uh, strange and interesting questions. So uh, that, that that's the heart of it. And, you know, I guess the, the, the strangest and most interesting question of all is how do you get heat hot enough to melt bricks? Yeah. When it, it requires 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit to melt brick. That's mm -hmm. extreme heat. That's hotter than, yeah. your, you know, your your urban conflagration. Well, jet fuel can bring down a couple of steel sticks. So why wouldn't that work? Right. You know, it's interesting when you right. talk about this melted brick idea, because then we're talking about ancient technology, basically. Right. Because what now creates a fire that would be hot enough to burn at those temperatures to melt this type of brick? And mm -hmm. then the question would be, are you able to maybe locate and recover some of that brick and perhaps be able to tell like how it was destroyed? Would that would there be a residue perhaps like. Uh, the glass, the vitrified glass, for instance, over in the, I think, Gobi Desert, right? Sahara. Sahara Desert. There's this mm -hmm. site over there, and this, this is also allegedly the site where they talked about these Vimanas having these great weapons and this nuclear war occurring. And vitrified glass is one of these things where sand gets hot enough to turn into glass like that. But it does take these crazy temperatures that didn't, mankind allegedly didn't possess the technology of at that time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um the um the the vajras like you know the 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 devices with the like the trident kind of three-dimensional trident on both sides with like that knot knob in the middle that looks like a zero point sort of yeah z pinch type diagram mm -hmm. uh vajra means both lightning and diamond which is interesting because if you think about the power that it 
takes to actually vitrify you know uh sand let's say like to turn sand into glass right lightning can do that you know but a thunderbolt of the god you know like it's talked about exactly that you know in, in all the ancient scripts uh scriptures talk about the thunderbolts of the gods and then the images of of zeus holding a trident or you know it's it's i think that's referring all to the same thing and it's in in and this gets into the work of emmanuel velikovsky where he talks about uh planets and what is the um he's got several books but planets in collision or something um where the, that the newtonian idea of a stable clockwork solar system is actually not not really true that right it's an unstable system and then if planets which are charged body bodies if they get wandered too close to each other they will actually discharge and create an electrical arc in the form of thunderbolts um so thunderbolts project uh, um is a wonderful organization on youtube that has just oodles of videos getting into the, the like the plasma physics of all of this the electric universe theory dave i know that you're deep into this stuff and it's, I well you described what you sorry you described what happens when you put two capacitors close to each other right you have an automatic spark right. discharge between the two so that's yeah it. yeah yeah that, so that's one idea of where how you know how this sort of phenomena could have come about and then you get into uh instant petrification and petrified wood and all the you know biblical accounts of carving uh valleys and canyons and mountains raising and and terraforming landscapes through pa plasma discharges in this sort of uh right you know, phenomena what's interesting is that the uh what was that called that thing we vajra. were just, the vajra it's interesting to note that it's something that uh i know that um uh, Elon Musk has tweeted out that he claims to sleep next to, but more importantly than that, mm. the it speaks to what you said about the Z pinch and then about the, again, the infinity symbol and this repetition of that. But also it's interesting when you guys had talked about, um, just discussed earlier a few minutes ago, what could have melted these types of bricks? Well, if, if the if they were using what you'd call um, like longitudinal scalar waves, then you could technically have uh the post burn look as if it was burned but when the actual process happened it would actually be more like a very cold fusion type situation where the internal mass is then being pulled out of the object itself in a very cold way um this is basically using heat to produce coal to then extract mass out of an object and make it basically whether it's a submarine or a brick basically just deflate like jello now there's been some mm -hmm. theory that this is what was also used to bring down the uh the, the the twin towers as we as as you referenced just a few minutes ago but that's one way that that it could work and the ironic thing is this goes back to our chat the other day about normal um calorimeters would not detect this yeah because by definition there's no set parameter or spectrum by means to which measure this effect from this is and, what's fascinating we talked yeah. about <clears throat> excuse yeah. me we talked about some ev events occurring in in such a way to where the tools are calibrated so that they'll pick up a, and detect and find this but it's got nothing to do with that they're, they were calibrated to find that but also they're calibrated not to find this other energy source which is why it's sort of not only kept from you, but the machines won't even pick it up. So it's yeah. not even detectable. So this is what's fascinating about this idea is that maybe right. it was something that can resemble something else like melted bricks, but really it was something completely, I, right. I guess, sort of natural, sort you of, know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of these things to where now it's what's the question of technology versus magic versus science versus just knowledge like was just just mm -hmm. a combination of things that they knew how to put together because then that's you know in my mind a little bit more in the realm of knowledge but we'd call it technology right um technology right. Te yeah that's does that a, work yeah, i like that one technology yeah. yeah and there's that ac clark quote i think um any technology sufficiently advanced will appear as magic right yeah right sort of thing as, and that seems to be what we're mostly talking about with this kind of stuff when you really look at it, because it's it's gaslit and away from you that it even exists at all. Yes. The detectors mm -hmm. can't detect anything. You're told it's crazy and you can't look at things that way because it goes against the science, right? But then really you're gaslit about against your own observation to kind of dick with your discernment. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. That's what happens. And you then that creates an, a debate amongst people in society. And next thing you know, you've detracted from the thing that you were even focusing on to begin with. And therefore you end up like what we have now where we don't know uh, what caused the, uh, sorry, we don't know if there's anything of that type that occurred during the 1889 Great Fire. And mm -hmm. so it just kind of, it's something that just gets kind of lost to history, right? You know, so it, just, his story. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right, right. And Matt, you were showing on a presentation we had on the website uh, that, that you did with us. It was this awesome question and answer. Um, and thank you so much for that. That was incredible. You had images, um, I think they were woodcuts or just drawings, but they're newspaper clippings, some of them of airships laser beaming mm -hmm. down in the 1800s. Like, what were they laser yeah. beaming? They weren't spotlights because they were laser beaming and then fire was coming out only exactly where they were shooting in some of the images to depict it, that's the origin point of it. I think those images were uh, from the First World War, I believe. Um, but yeah, it begs the question, like, what the hell? <laughs> what right. did they show in there? There was, And there's a lot of those uh, portrayals of airship um, zeppelins, whatever, where it's not bombs being dropped. It's, yeah, it's some kind of, it looks like an energy weapon coming out of the belly of these ships and blowing up the cities below. And how terrifying is that? But all, it begs the question of how far back does this technology go? Right. And so, you know, when you get into the urban fires of the late 1800s, um, like in Washington, um, I pointed out that Seattle, Ellensburg, which used to be a prominent city in central Washington state, now it's a state, um, and Spokane, which is on the eastern uh, side of the state, uh, all of those, uh, just the downtown, all of them burned down within one month of each other in the summer of 1889, at the same exact time that Washington Territory was holding a statehood convention where the federal, you know, the United States Federal Federation right. wanted to drag the territory into the Union. And so all of a sudden there's this like shock and awe campaign going on where these downtowns are bring down. And, you know, it's not like the storybooks tell us, you know, old, old Miss O'Leary's lantern knocking over, you know, the, the lantern in the shed and it's a wooden, you know, ramshackle uh, outpost town with made out of matchsticks ready to go up. No, we've, right. you know, so many people in this you know, research field have looked at these photos and uh, these were old, stone brick masonry ornate old world urban centers yeah yep so like it they also were, <clears throat> yeah so the, just sorry to tie it in, in in a bow like when kelly's finding these bricks melted on the beach that could have been from that time it's just yeah like i've been saying stones don't lie you know we right. can suppose what we want but when you've got the actual object in front of you and say well how did this happen how but the, How did this yeah. melt? And this is right. the question, though. This brings up what Dave and I were talking about, yeah. about can you fake what something looks like by doing something else? Uh, meaning an energy source or a technology that you're told is crazy and that doesn't exist, right? Like the ability to melt bricks or to be able to turn them into complete liquid and melt them into place like we see in some of these ancient structures before they were stacked on with the haphazard little rocks that they found everywhere from the previous or the later societies, right? So there's this mm -hmm. advanced advanced way of looking at the world beforehand. And it seems that it was just ubiquitous. It was everywhere. Because you find this neoclassical architecture, this old world architecture, even in um, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. all over the world, it's the same, the same damn right. kind of architecture around the same time. And then all these pictures where you're supposed to believe that this huge monolith was created in whatever time that they said it was was dirt streets uh and nobody in any of the pictures so this town doesn't even look habitated habitated yeah and then but whenever you uh go to these buildings matt this is something you and i've spoken about before when it says founded that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that they built the motherfucker that means that they found it and just slapped their name on it and there's fascinating cases of, of these whole yeah. centuries being wiped off of plaques that are crazy just wild numbers so this is what fascinates me so much and i love the work that you're doing and shout out mac terillion as well for uh the great oh, deception yeah. podcast yeah brother he's the one that connected us all but amazing kind of work that y'all do here and it's just fascinating to me dude and especially now we're talking about airships because we did the dell show episode 
And that just lights me up, man. I love shit like that. It makes you think because when you look at World War II and you look at World War One, and you, you don't really know why World War One was started, and that you know, the, and then you look at the the Hindenburg crashing. So it's interesting. And then you look at some of this footage that um, I've put up quite a while ago, but on my Instagram showing the Germans doing commercials. Uh, that, this was before World War Two was started. But you're talking about, for example, I, if I'm not mistaken, things like me maglev trains. You had yeah. all that kind of stuff, and you had. Um, engineers out of like Michigan in the 1930s and 40s just again before World War II talking about how they could power entire towns off of just you know like five dollars a month or whatever so even converted to today's like I think still nothing significant and so it's interesting to see that when all of this happened it was almost as if there was no problem with these things existing within um, uh, Europe to a particular degree but the second it got into the uh the the market or the the public consciousness more specifically of north america it seemed as though and, and i'm speaking particularly to the hindenburg it seemed as though that there was uh something it looked like something needed to be done so you had the burning of the hindenburg and then it's it's just very interesting because the the burning of the hindenburg for, at least in terms of what i can understand with respects to the historical cross reference seems to align as well with um i think it was president or chancellor hindenburg or something like that that uh, was first in command and then hitler was right below him before hitler took power so it was almost that you know they built this great ship and then you you name it after the leader or whatever and then all of a sudden what do you know it burns down and uh. when it gets to america so it, well, it, yeah also the sort of a sigh i heard as well to add to this right. uh, sort of sigh up against helium and that type of air travel so they oh, wanted to sure. ban helium, helium as a substance because of how dangerous it was and they said that that's why it went up like that and so it was this huge smear campaign against helium. And now, of course, the number one consumer of helium, anybody NASA. on the planet? It's NASA. That's right. They're yes. inflating all of those They're things. They're the biggest to send them up there. harvester of helium. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got to. You know, it's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of balloons to fake what they're doing. So uh, it's interesting, <laughs> though, when now uh, we, we look at it from that angle because it, it puts a whole new spin on this. But still, then you then you tie in the foundlings, these hundreds of thousands of children that were just shown the fuck up and trained from one side of the country to another with no parents. They were just right. orphans, just here, take these kids. Who needs a baby here? Take three. The incubator stuff set up in the um, World's Fairs, it was just right. weird. I mean, maybe yeah. just people were into different shit back then, but it just seems odd. You know what I mean? The helium thing, if I could say very quickly, the helium, there's more to it than just that. That picture on the far left yeah, right there, this little guy. those images are are real. It's a video. So just, it's... The, the top one at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, here's the thing with this too. And good point. Um, do you mind telling us about this? I pull it up. Audio only audience. Check the show description down there. There's a video link and you guys can just go check it out or on YouTube or Odyssey or Rockfin or any of that. Uh, to come check this out because we're sharing photos. We're having a good time. You can see Dave's pretty face too. He's got the beard grown out. <laughs> it looks good. Matthew's rocking it. So, so the thing with the ships is I can say, well, what I can say first and foremost is that, um, and I ask people to read between the lines here, helium also has much more of a significant purpose than just putting things into balloons as well. Um, it can it can lead to... Uh, over unity where again uh, you get far more energy coming out than what you're putting in so you can argue free energy in that regard it can mm. lead to um a, things far more advanced let's just say than the airships and i think that there was a, a long force um foresight held by elements that wanted to suppress the, suppress this thing okay if the airships are already done what what's going to come after that so i think there were a lot of reasons uh, uh, and that mutually benefited a lot of different uh, groups that wanted to keep this quiet as to why helium should be suppressed. And if you look now at the price of, I believe it's helium, it is quite expensive. So yeah. it's very, and then you see NASA harvesting the most of it. And uh, it, of course being used for balloons, but it can be used for other things as well. And that's also why um, it, it gets interesting because when it comes to things like uh, pneumatic valves, Right. During this time as well, there's talk where we see on the screen, uh, there was also the talk of these tube transportation valves um, and these subway underground subway valves that were pneumatically uh, basically uh, driven or pneumatically uh, propelled. And what's interesting about that is that that's something that just completely has been dismissed from the public eye in terms of this form of just pneumatics and this form of transportation. Um, I believe it's, uh, yeah, transport and then uh, pneumatic PNEU. Uh, yeah, T A M I C. New oh M A T I C. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> not new Tamic, pneumatic. <laughs> 
uh, remove the A and the T. I love yep. that we're live M. on this doing this. Okay. Uh, yeah, just put I C. <laughs> Don't worry. Jesus Christ. It'll, it'll be fine. Okay, here we here are. Here we go. <laughs> Do you want me to put Old World? Yeah. This one here, bottom right. Yes, I have seen these as well. Look at this shit. This yeah. is so cool. This is just how you got around. Yeah, the pneumatic valves, right? And this, of course, would have provided a tremendous threat to, which is also interesting, by the way, because 1903 the uh, was the year that the whale, um, like killing whales, that industry basically disappeared within probably... A, 12 to 18 months because what happened with that was they were using i believe the whale oil for transportation yeah. but then uh petroleum and gas and all that was discovered at the same in 1903 so it's interesting that this was allegedly happening in the late 1800s and then 1900s going into world war one it was sort of like putting the icing on the cake of removing the at the very least the knowledge of this type of stuff and then world war ii no. really put the icing on the cake this is what's so <laughs> fascinating because you could just simply say it's outdated Say it's old and this is better That's, and new. Right, right, exactly. And this is the thing, right? So if you have... Um, but it's not. We have no, examples of this shit in our everyday existence. Every time you get a new phone, you're just like, okay, well, shit. You know, it's going to be exactly. awesome for a minute and then turn out way faster Ex than it should. And exactly. things are meant to go to shit, like the 100-year light bulb. We talked about this. Yes. But There's well, a lot that has to do with compressed air that can lead to lots of forms of tr transportation that doesn't harm the environment and is also quicker and faster in speed for their respective vehicles than gasoline. Yeah, and that's what they talked about in that Charles A. A. Delshaw book, The um, Secrets of Delshaw by Dennis Crenshaw. You guys definitely picked this up. It's on my reading list this year. Again, we've talked about it, so check that episode out, but beautiful work. And what they talked a lot about on there was compressed air, mm -hmm. um, little uh, pumps and machines and generators, but then also an NB gas. Yes. So could they have been calling helium NB gas there, or was it something else? Um. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to see in terms of what what they referred to in NB gas relative to right, helium. Right. What I can say, though, is when they talk about things like pumps and valves and uh, compressed air, think about the same way that we talk about these days about pulsing a laser beam, for example. Think about when you pump compressed air in a tube. That's a form of a pulse. Right. So if you had that sort of pulsing I, understanding, regardless of how it was viewed and explained, it's very feasible for this to have been uh, uh, actually happening, transportation-wise. And this is the thing. It's so simple that that's the thing. pretty much anybody can do it, which is why they have to specialize all this shit and proprietorize all of it. Sure, and if they, bring it out, if they were to bring it out again, I'll just kind of leave it at this, is it would kind of be a sort of uh, very highly regulated, only certain companies can have access to the core materials that require this. You know, you got to pay a certain amount of money every month or some type of subscription fee to be able to ride them. And so this also speaks to what, what's attempting to occur today in the sense of, you know, there are companies coming out where you buy the car, but you can never buy the batteries so you have to rent the battery, right? And this goes to the whole own oh, nothing, be happy. Now, I'm not trying to say glass half empty. I'm just saying that it seems like it's the same freaking playbook every X amount of years. Well, it's funny too, because it, it seems to be going back to the simplicity in some ways, but they're yeah. just putting more lights on it. So right, it probably right. operates the exact same way. You're like, why is steam coming? Why is smoke coming out? No, 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 it doesn't. You're good. Yeah. It's pneumatic. You yep. know, or there's simplified ways of doing this. Right. And it seems, I mean, just like the bank, you know, the thing at the bank, that's awesome. You know, uh, right. that's Futurama, right? That they do that? They hop in that thing I and shoot so. them across? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're almost there, guys. Um, <laughs> Matthew, how are you doing, dude? I'm hanging. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, I, I wanted to circle back. Uh, David, you said something about, you just raised a question, like, why did World War I happen? It's like these things just happened. But it, right. like, when you piece it all together, when you string all these events together, I mean, go back to the Civil War, and then you have the urban conflagrations all across the United States and beyond. Uh, all throughout the late 1800s. Then you have World War One. You have World War Two, right. and it just it, 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 and it seems if you put it all together, it really does seem like just this a long term plan to systematically deconstruct this old world technology, culture, uh, architecture, right. antiquitech, like the, all of these old systems that ran on let's just say ether energy to kind of right. put a bow on it. The, the other thing to your point, Matt, is we see here in this picture, the pneumatic tube mail system in New York City. So we see again, it was being, it, it's interesting, Wolf, you're likely to find pictures of the mailing system, but not of the, not of any Transportation. I, I, well, Human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They showed one with a cat going into it, actually. They yeah. said they stuffed a cat into one of these things. So um, it, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, right here. So for everybody watching. Uh, is that the cat? Yeah, the cat's in there, I suppose. That's what we're 
led to believe is the cat. But look how big that thing is. I mean, you know, um, it's interesting. You could just see that as being a simple sort of backyard uh, thing, maybe for your groceries or something, but really maybe just outside there was something way cooler for humans and that was much more scalable to industry. Right, right. You know, but they do have that one of that dude laying in that tiny coffin little tube and he's supposed to be a good representative for this idea and absolutely not. I don't know if you've seen this. It is terrifying looking. He's supposed to, I'm going to find this again, audio only audience. Check this. There's the little guy. Yeah. Fuck that. What do yeah. you think? And you're heading head first. Uh, I'll be honest with you all. I would do it. If I, if I thought it was safe, I would do it. Yeah. If it was something back then you could trust people, right? Well, that's, you could trust it, what you're being told. If it was something, you know, 10, 20 minutes, you get to a certain place. I have no problem. I'll take a nap in the tube. I'm mm, cool. Mm, that's, that's mm. me though. But Matthew, what are your thoughts on this type of transportation? I, I'd go. I'd definitely would do you? it. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. You guys, I'll meet you there. Well, we see <laughs> right this, this sure one as well. Quickly. This one's better. I'll ride in that one. But that's still, that's like that submarine that just collapsed on those people. You know what I mean? That's true. But look right here. How does this operate thing? Because it's rails, but is it floated or magnetics or what do you think? Could be magnetics, could be some type of pressure on the outer rims of the actual structure itself, not of the actual transportation tube, but of those the, look like tracks. I think there was, I think there was rollers under that thing. Right. Yeah. It looks it probably rollers. And do you think they lifted it with air, like uh, that air hockey type? Um, deal? I don't. I if they did, I. You could shoot compressed air up under the bitch as you roll. I don't it. rule it out at all. I don't know if it was the go-to thing, but because to me it would just make sense. Like Matt said, you put the rollers and then you just pump the valve, and that's it. But it does not. It would not surprise me if they did. See, this is tracks, but I mean, no signs of electricity anywhere. Right. You know what I mean? No just wires pressure. or anything to speak of, but. It, so how did the how did the helium come into this? Was that what ran the pneumatic process, or how did that? You, you mentioned could say there's a, a significant part of helium that that helps to run the pneumatic. Oh, is that an actual picture? Yeah. Okay. Holy crap! Pneumatic, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the helium basically, when you compress any type of plasma, largely argon, helium, cryon, I think it is. Uh, what can then happen is. Oh, that's an interesting one. What can happen is then the same way we talked about like the laser pulsing example, you then compress essentially the, uh, in particular, the electrons. So what happens is the second you let it out of that compressed environment, the mm -hmm. electrons basically want to uh, uh, essentially um, jerk very freely after that. So okay. if you can align it in a certain direction with a strong enough pump, there's your transportation. Amazing. And so they want to get rid of, or, yeah. you know, make helium scarce. And it's just kind of like, uh, with mercury, like suddenly mercury in, my, in our time, mercury became this very dangerous. Well, the thing same thing when they talk to be they talk about rid of completely. They, exactly. Like nuclear, same thing. So they, they just, can, hmm. they can use those boring tunnels to, that are nuclear powered to make those tunnels. No problem. It's for the military. It's safe, but you know, God for, for the people, it's not safe. Okay. Right. It's yeah. Yeah. They power submarines with it. Fine. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Don't you dare yeah. power that neighborhood for a fraction of the cost. <laughs> right, right. How dare you? This is fun. Look at this with the hanging child uh, track thing so you can have your meal in peace. And actually, look at this line of strollers down here. That was sort of your babysitter in the old world. You just send them out on this little floating tram, which Seems is like people amazing. trusted each other a lot more. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like a community, dude. Yeah. But I mean, they had like hundreds of thousands of free kids, so they could, <laughs> maybe they were like, ah, oh, I could give up a few. I don't know. Um, that's, <laughs> that's what the that's playgrounds look the way they did. But <laughs> right. look at this shit. I mean, these are these uh, cars in tube things. And this just looks like a wheel, dude, like a spoke or something. And they just jam it into this configuration. Well, the wheel wouldn't have to move until the valve, it's, until the pump is put in. And then that's it. The wheel, the, the pump... Uh, the pressure that releases on the back end just moves the wheels and that's it. Wow. Right? Doesn't... Yeah, easy peasy. Yeah. I like that we have Dave here. <laughs> he does make it easier. Oh, me. look at that one on the far yeah, left. This yeah, this is look. dope as shit. Guys, we're just looking at pictures, audio only audience. Um, thanks for hanging out. Wow. That one and then also that one there at the bottom. Yeah, this little guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at the scale of the way that That's what I'm saying. They knew what they were doing. That's the thing that's so ironic about all of this. That was a finger for a Voltron that they had back then. <laughs> yeah, so they knew. God. Yeah. Just this kind of shit, dude. It, yeah. Doesn't it make you just want to get a goddamn time machine and just go just watch? I just want to go walk around, check it out. I get UFOs. You know what I mean? No, I no, get, but I'm with you. That. 
I get like um, space travelers and shit. Like I don't get them. I don't agree with them fucking with people. Like, right. I get a hands off thing with that, but I would personally, but that's just me. But I would love to just be a fly on the wall in any of these places and just go check all this cool shit out. Oh, absolutely. Look, they were just building stuff like this just for the fuck of it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, the scale was enormous and 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 it makes me think of the, you know, the world, some of the world fair buildings, like the uh, manufacturer's building, the Chicago World's Fair was big enough to hold 300,000 people. And they built all of this in two years and that whole, you know, that story book tale that yeah. they attached to it. But I was looking at uh, f- construction photos with, with Matt um, from Great Deception. And I was just looking at the interior of the manufacturer's building. I said, you know what, dude, I think what this is, is an airship hangar. Mm. I think this, this, is, this was used to manufacture airships because it's the, the perfect scale for that. Right. And it's funny right. that they say they're temporary structures because that is a steel beam structure. And that's, when you, that's when you call bullshit on the temporary claim. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I called bullshit long before that, but that kind of just puts the, the, the punctuation right. mark at the end of it. Yeah. It's <clears throat> right. See, mm-hmm. that's the thing. We see things like this, for example, that, yeah. Yeah. That make you go, okay. How much of this was, was scuttled off for, yeah. secret? You know, yeah. And how much of this is just pose? Look at these dudes just posing. They're not putting this guy in a suit. Look how clean their white shirts are. Okay. Right. You're not wearing this shirt to suit some oily ass thing up with water dripping everywhere. This dude's not doing anything. This is a staged photo. Right. And this is the other thing about this, that they have that sort of technology. They also produce clunky images like this that make you think, there was no way they were flying around. Look at what these dickheads were doing. Yeah, that's another thing. They still yeah. had phones with cables. But, I mean, it looks super staged. You know, and we're going to have Kelly on, actually. I invited her for this and get better, Kelly. Uh, sending you healing vibes there. She uh, uh, isn't feeling well. But mm. she is a photography expert as well. And she goes through these uh, Washington yeah. University archives and yeah. goes, that's a Photoshop photo. Historical. Mm. She goes, they were using Photoshop back then. And she could prove it. I mean, it's fascinating. Yeah, she showed me a little bit of the techniques that she uses to run run old photos through Photoshop and apply certain filters, and then she could detect the outline of where they were cropping and so forth. It's very fascinating. Like what they're doing with NASA, you know, because they had the moon outline, all the moon photos you could yeah. scale a certain way yes. with the contrast, and you could see that they faked the motherfucker and they yeah. plugged it in there. Look at this, jetpack. What year was this? Um 1600s yeah, no <laughs> shit right yeah good call i mean this kind of like this is just awesome um i don't know if this is real or not and of course we're just pulling up pictures we don't know what and now you can't say oh this is an ai recreating something these are fucking dope the um cycles that they had the unicycle thing that yeah. was a motorcycle and they were like kids right around on this thing have you yes. seen this yes um, how do we make more of these happen? What's interesting is there's some, if you watch some, uh, some world, it's very difficult to, to point out, but if you watch some World War II footage or documentaries on YouTube, you'll see some of the footage that is used. Uh, the, you can actually see some of them on this, but it's very brief. It's not like it's anything, you know, um, it's like, it's almost, it, it's not wanted to be seen. Cause this is some mm-hmm. Star Wars fucking uh, attack of the clones shit dude mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. i mean this is you mount a machine gun or two on the side of this thing you have a couple of them together you got yep. a serious combative the like is, element initially when i started seeing these images i i thought wow how cool but it's all seemed experiment experimental but then you just keep seeing more and more and more images and it's and just different endless, versions and of them. you realize yes. wow yeah. right different versions and this you know this stuff was at some some level much of it was being mass produced like electric cars and so forth 120 years ago right See, right what a silly comparison let's let's appreciate here that we have an ad for a i'm not even gonna say the name of it fuck them this thing is a, a trust it actually looks cool shit do you want to go get a couple of these? <laughs> right around looks fun. Cool. so <laughs> you have this though next to this old you know this guy mm-hmm. saying yeah what are y'all doing we had that a long fucking time ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, and that's why, for example, if we, uh, for a second here, if we scrolled yeah, up, please. assuming, just, I'm going to presume that this is real for a second. If that's the case, man, this is a big middle finger to society now because <laughs> it speaks to the whole, again, the, the, the concept of all of this having been, or to a large degree, this understanding of, excuse me, such, such concepts already being developed back then and terrible to say but at least for me and in my opinion it certainly speaks to why 
to why war uh, would have had in the eyes of people that wanted to keep this stuff quiet would have had to have occurred um, to, to create a sort of massive, di- like, I don't know what this thing is on the bottom, right? If the, but- it looks dope as fuck. I don't know either, but oh, it looks like, well, Dave, I, I, I can, I'd like to try outrageously to speak edited, so Sure. Sure. I, I think that the, it, the system that has rolled over the old world in this last 150 years or so, give or take is based on debt. Yes, it's based, it's it's, it's yeah. all based on debt. So everything they do when they, you know, when the central bank generates more money, somehow just comes out of the ether to right. another war and an, an, another to open another war front is like endless money because they just produce the money, which is basically creating debt pulling like Gregory Manorino is great to listen to if you're trying to figure out the economic side of it. Um, they're, they're pulling the wealth out of the future right? in the form of debt. And that's the system. And it's a vampire system. And so, you know, I look at the old architecture, you know, we all grew up in this system, right? And, and right. our minds, our consciousness are shaped by the, you know, the age that we grew up in. Um, but I look at these old world buildings and it's, they're so ornate and like no expenses spared to make it as beautiful as it possibly can. Yeah. And, and, and the only thing that makes sense is that those buildings were built under a different system that wasn't debt based. Yeah. Y- yes. And, yeah. and yeah. that the more, you know, if you think about these buildings that they actually were doing something functional when they put these spires and domes and, and, and Tiquitech antenna that yeah. they actually would using piezoelectric materials and properties and generating electricity to somehow like radiant fireplaces, you know, to, to heat the place naturally or right. you know, through this ether energy, the more spires and domes and antenna that they built, the more right. energy they were drawn down. And that yes. energy was going directly into the inhabitants. Whereas our, 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 our built environment is completely the antithesis of that, where it's all extractive. It's all subtractive. It's, you know, you're, you're drawing from resources. You're the, the occupants, like the, the vitality of the human beings that occupy those buildings is being drained to keep those buildings going. Like think about just modern office building. It's a complete, it's a, it's a, it's a, just a system of constant drainage in every aspect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 What's dinosphere runs on one wheel. 1932. Yeah. See, this is, or it was told to the public in 1932. How long before that do you think that it was actually there? Or do you think that they actually invented shit along with the public's knowledge of it? And they sort of maybe got input. This is where it gets interesting. I think we can propose a potential mix of all of it. It's in, because this looks like a time, and I, I'm just interpreting where, like you said, Matt, the, the system was different and there was much more uh, inclination for, or at least people seem to have much more time to be inclined to create. And so yeah. it could have been a lot of it was suppressed long ago a lot and then give it put out at this point. It could have been a combination of people working on it and getting, you know, put in an article, news article and then the, the uh, excuse me, then people giving their input and vice versa. I mean, we we have for, uh, as well as uh, we have Otis T. Carr, who was a protege of Tesla and who had constant talks with Tesla mm-hmm. and Einstein uh, in the 30s. He had developed uh, a craft of, uh, in fairness, he given a fair amount of funds to build it, but it basically wood, aluminum, uh, electromagnets, um, and essentially built a craft that uh, the FBI then later, because it worked, it had to raid and seize. And he was sentenced by the uh, SEC for some fraud stuff that never actually happened and so on and so forth. But it's interesting to see that all of this seemed to happen around, again, late 1800s, early 1900s. And then there was like a zip up on all of it. Mm-hmm. Like the Roswell case. Saucer crash. I mean, w- yeah, weather yeah, balloon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. weather balloon, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, <clears throat> man, it's, it's just like, and it's just so cool. And you got this little kid here. Look at that. But you know what's interesting? And maybe this is just me, but it seemed like people look like they actually cared in these pictures. You yep. know what I mean? Like mm. it, like you said, Matt, there was genuine uh, <laughs> craftsmanship and, and uh, passion put into it. It wasn't something that was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to build this thing. It's going to last for a couple of years and that's it. We're going to leave it alone. This looked like something that, you know, you could have probably had for an entire lifetime in terms of uh, being able to maintain it. And whether it was a ship or a, a something like this or whatever. And, you know, it's free time is what we're talking about here. And I'm glad you guys brought it up. 
Right. It's that these folks had the time to do this. They could be creative. They could go nuts right. on things, which means that they weren't, we could just logically deduce, killing themselves with work to right. the degree that we are now, right? right? I mean, even my grandparents, their house was like 40 grand when they first bought it. And it was like two right. story huge, right? So right. we know how that works. And so it's interesting uh, even to think about then a society with this much ingenuity just letting folks do stuff. And that's why you were coming up with so many cool discoveries. Mm -hmm. And like you were talking about, Dave, it's just when we start to look at some of the interesting, more interesting work going on now, then you start to think about, um, which one? This that one right there, yeah. You start to think about uh, that people were discovering things that they shouldn't have been probably back then That's, because of how readily available it exactly. is. Exactly. And that, see, for example, assuming this is, uh, presuming this is accurate, uh, Portugal, 1910s. This makes, I mean, I there's footage on YouTube where if you watch World War II documentaries, they show a little bit of this, where they show people in the 20s and 30s with the cameras, uh, you know, riding the scooters along in... Uh, in uh, in Germany or what was called Prussia, so it's it, it it was there. It just seems as though there was a strong effort to limit the, um, basically to limit the showcasing of this. Well, and then they didn't at have, least afterwards. I get uh, we're assuming here. This is yeah. a presupposition that they didn't have the internet and that they didn't have a way of telling a bunch of folks about really cool stuff, or they didn't have a need to suppress it. If you had a if you had a worldwide or a semi global pneumatic ma mail system, you can get messages across pretty darn fast. That's fair. Right? Yeah, that's the to your point. I'm saying like this. All it takes is one guy to do his sketches and his uh, his work of his thing and then fold it up, put in a pneumatic thing and send it off. It's Somewhere in Germany else, now from Paris. It's in Germany from Paris. Someone else copies it. You go, yeah, yeah. Wow, and the, the information was just shared like that. But it could also be semi-private in a way too because you could make sure those tubes only went like to your buddy. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, a, what, like the straight cup string right. thing, you know? That right. only goes to my friend's treehouse, and I know that. I know he's going to be on the other end because right. the sign says, no girls allowed. His sister would never pick it up. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's, yeah. It, it, but it's fascinating when we get to in, into what we call this antiquitech because uh, just the building designs. And again, it seems like um, if these people did build these buildings, that they were also doing just some crazy cool shit. And maybe that these things, because we don't see a lot of construction photos, we see a lot of deconstruction photos of the World's Fairs. Right. But construction photo, photos, just sort of, you know, uh, an Edley Scallion thing, maybe, that yeah. he didn't want to be seen or they didn't want, they didn't, yeah. or maybe they were scrubbed, right? Uh, and not all of them, you know, we can't just make these wild assumptions about anything, but there's way too much evidence for us to consider, not to consider other possibilities. Right. No, I completely agree. Um, Plus, it's fun. It's just cool as shit. Look at this. Yeah. These airships, man, that that uh, gets me going. That's the thing, right? And then it just makes you think about, uh, for you know, uh, breakaway civilizations or yes. any of that kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like this kind of stuff. I love this. This is what uh, the world would be if MTV just kept playing music. <laughs> I love those memes. Anyway, so Matt, what do you think about this, dude? Do you think that this is something that is possible in this realm um, with the current I mean, folk we got walking around here? I, I think, I, well, I mean, what we're looking at now is like this urban fantasy. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I think we're fun. we're quickly moving away from whatever future that they in, had envisioned. Like, I, I guess there was a time where they where the cities were a cool place to be and now they're not and so um right. maybe this will come around again but it's not going to be in our lifetime i don't think um I, I i think we're better off you know doing what you you're doing there brandon and and just hunkering down in the countryside um and just building an alternative to right. you know the mess that's being made of the cities right now they're being turned into it's like the end game for this whole 150 year project and right. it's to turn them into you know free range you know uh human zoos zombies yeah. or whatever yeah, it's like zombies. you know full of yeah you know it's seattle seattle man i lived right next to it and it's yeah it's just on the one hand you have no end of skyscrapers no end of condos being built all over the place there's construction right and all this like whiz bang technology and, and wealth and then on the street level you just have like misery in, in, in these homeless encampments and fentanyl zombies and craziness. So it's, you know, it's gonna, it's collapsing in real time, but they're getting ready to 
roll you know roll out the new iteration and you know i'm i'm trying to get out of here <laughs> like i'm, right. Bro, well, if I'm I trying to get out of here as a, much a as point, i can if i could say quickly a point that speaks to all of this in terms of the potentiality of this stuff actually being built back then to to strong and very high degrees of um of engineering is that I have a document that I came across the other week, which was from the early seventies. It was from a, it came out, it was done through a, a freedom of information act request by a journalist who got an inside tip or something in 1974 or 76, one of the two, something like that. But basically what it discussed was in 1971, there were all these patents filed under the, the uh, U S secrecy patent uh, division. And what was interesting was that it was found that during the process, and I don't know if the journalist that got this, if it was a mistake or not, but the process of submission found that the military, of course, had to have first dibs as to what was submitted, like first mm. looks before anybody else. Mm. But there was a constant turndown for uh, any type of energetic device that used the sun's rays, like a solar mm. panel, but that was more than 20, anything that was 21 or more percent efficient, it would be, con it would be deemed as uh, it would be denied and, or bought up and silenced and deemed as a, a national security uh, priority. Anything that was, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is there were solar panels that vastly uh, surpassed the current amount of absorption and conversion to energy that we now have yeah. that were done back then that were then right. attempted to be brought out and simply due to the system. Not like nowadays, you know, you can film it with your phone and put on TikTok, say, hey, to the world, like, uh, uh, like Parkenstein did there, but yeah. the, that it was happening. It was, yeah. and you had people claiming a hundred percent of 150% efficiency of transfer from solar to electric. So it's been, it's been there. And it's, yeah. and they want the scarcity. Thing. They want dependency. Right. Right. Because control. like you said, the system's got to work like a 30 year mortgage. If not, it's not. Right. If Yeah. Man, yeah. when are we going to fucking overthrow this thing? When, it, what are we doing here? The, it's going to collapse know? of its own. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that a bunch. You know, they said that the I Bolshevik agree. revolution as well, I and agree. we just they just sat by and didn't do anything. So, at what point are we just going to go? Yeah, we're done. Like with the waiting, you know, it, it, like what? Yeah, what are we doing? Well, here? you're doing it. I mean, you're you're doing it, Brandon. You're you're you know, you're building your alternative, and I think that's what you need to do. You know, and I'm not saying break out the guillotines or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying just unsubscribe from the bullshit that they're feeding mm -hmm. you, and the mm -hmm. thing Unplugged. will die. That's yeah. it. That's all you've got to do. This I is think. The I think to your so. point. I think that's why we're seeing so much of what we're seeing in the world now because the system is in in chaos because many are unplugging. Now it would be great if more unplugged, but that's. I think that's part of what we're seeing as well. Um, not to get into it because it gets a very political quickly and that's i'm sure that's deliberate by those that are curating all of this but certain you know wars certain things come up and it's mm -hmm. all, almost how convenient you know it always very, seems right on time uh, yeah know. yeah mm -hmm. it, and how convenient in relation to many things people coming out with free energy devices that they're now posting from their phones people many different things not just this kind of stuff but it just seems quite timely yeah and hegelian it, dialect is yeah it riddled throughout yes. our, our history I mean, yes. it's constant yep. oh here's a problem that might happen oh son of a bitch six <laughs> yeah. months later guess what well that's the also oh that, guess what also yeah. we have a fix for it yeah that yeah. takes 10 years to develop but we just happen to have it in our back pocket exactly yeah for this yeah. once in a never seen it again thing we have yeah. photos pulled up here oh, for the audio only <laughs> audience um that um depict this 19 is his January reads rather uh, Wednesday to be specific January 20th 1915 is it 13 13 or I don't have my glasses on you have glasses on we're relying on you it's World War One, basically. Okay. I think 15. I think 15. But yeah. this, this is what's fascinating, too, because it's just decimation. But you're, you're talking 1915 to roll this thing out. But this wasn't yeah. a new technology at 1915. No, this had been no, honed no. and developed. And so, you know, maybe the test market for this were those early fires in the um, in the Washington uh, area. And it just so happened country. again. Yeah, yeah right, no, all over the country. I think also, they were, yeah, they were destroying the old world and they were, and again, it's like, you know, I just keep repeating this because it bears repeating. It's always the business district. It's always the financial <laughs> district. It's yes. always the downtown of the city after city after city that got decimated. And then they tell, tell us that they were just built out of matchsticks and it's no, the photos right. prove What's otherwise. They're in the That's where stone and masonry. Yeah. Right. It Exactly where the Pentagon got hit was where they held all the files for the $2 trillion missing, right? That's, I didn't know Isn't that. that ironic? Shit. Right there. And they all, all the people happened to be abandoned that's, that area because of remodeling though. That's fine. You guys that's know nice. that the that's patent, the United States patent office twice 
burned down in the 1800s. <laughs> oh, I it believe just it. seems like the, I believe the that they, burning of the Alexandria Library yes. over and over. It just kind of seems like just many versions of that. And it's interesting to, I, I didn't know that, by the way. That's that's phenomenal. Dope. I didn't, I didn't know. That's, well, no, no, not, that's not phenomenal. It's phenomenal to hear. And it baffles me mm. uh, that pe people just how easily people can not remember something. And I'm not blaming people. I'm just saying it's just, again, without things like the internet and we see even with the internet, things can still be strongly manipulated. So with all of that, it's just, it baffles my mind that people, uh, it, that many people um, there, I'm sure there are others that are open to it as we know, uh, like people we know in our community and all, but that certain, that a fair chunk of people just dismiss it and just go, ah, well, you know, what do you, what, what are we going to do? Like they just kind of, that's what makes me go, oh, I got to go man. to work on Monday. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's what they count on. It, right. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's effective, unfortunately. Um, it, it was is, for me for is. a very long time. No, it, it is very much so. I remember that feeling too, having, you know, even in high school, having to go back to school or even after that work, oh, like, oh man, it's a uh, Saturday night. Okay. We got one more day and that's it. Back to work. Yeah. Right. It's, it's odd. And if anybody out there is still in the, uh, work game have you noticed that the weather is beautiful during the monday through friday but it yeah. sucks ass on the weekend i know Isn't that funny? i know it's I interesting think, almost like they can control that too now this is interesting october of 1934 i wanted to make sure that we had this pulled up here before we talked about it but it looks like uh i don't know what the, the top of that magazine said that. uncle sam's secret uh tunnel system oh bad out we will go back to this aerial landing field. Now, what, what did we just talk about? The solar photo cell. It says right here, it reads right. rather, 30, 1934, recent experiments in the conversion uh, of the sun's rays into electric power have led to an unusual idea in aerial equipment. Yes. It is a dirigible that not only would uh, get its power from the sun, but also provides space for a landing field in the air. Now, here's why I like it. The ordinary cigar-shaped dirigible, which is what's being reported constantly, yeah. that's the phrasing used, cigar-shaped dirigible, yeah. would in effect have a slice taken from the upper half of the gas bag uh, that would provide a large deck. But this is awesome. It's got a solar photo cell, is what they they call it, and they're planning for the majority of the top half of this damn thing to be a landing uh, solar panels that would provide power because they were very aware of it in it. the 30s. Yeah. And, the, and then, which again, this is not new technology back then if they're publishing it. Right. And then you have right. an airstrip in the middle of this. So, I mean, fascinating stuff. Why aren't we no, doing this today no, if it was just so easy back then? The stability that would have been needed to, to, to operate those things as a landing pad and to park, to, to dock yes, them at the top of skyscrapers as they did. They had to be perfectly, precisely stable, and they had to be able to move them where they wanted exactly, precisely, and then hold them steady. Um, that right. part is like just mind-boggling to me. How how they had that against wind? Technology. They didn't float. Yeah, against wind, against you know air currents, Down for yeah. which I guess is wind. That one right there when they're putting. Yeah. There you go. There's your hanger. Yeah, they call it, yeah, ion wind or whatever that, yeah, it's, but it's, it's a, uh, this is when they, the conflation of the scientific terms and it, let's see the contributor 1886 to, oh, okay. That's the, oh, date created 1929 Graf Zeppelin arriving in New York for second time. Yeah. See, so very interesting to see that this was something that was definitely there. And then fascinating as well. You have footage uh, all over the place of these hangars just being destroyed just yeah. destroyed. It's like you couldn't think of anything. Grain storage, you couldn't think to lease that yeah. out. You couldn't think of making it a skate park. No, because you got to erase the evidence for everything. So you got yeah. to clean it all up, right? That's right. Turn Even, it into a world fair. Yeah, yeah. And then destroy yeah. it immediately. But my mm -hmm. God, what a cool time. I mean, it just all the people gave a shit you know this yeah. is look at public transit now and then think of this train right here yeah and the ornateness of it they just cared mm -hmm. and they made the place beautiful because they could it's and they true. knew that it made people happy because they were into that it had to have been built with an economy of abundance not of scarcity i, I it's i'm a with different you. iteration of civilization entirely than what we're used to it's right the gobekli tepe idea that they couldn't have been this hunter-gatherer nomadic nonsense no. because they had all that time to carve that shit and to build that shit right look yeah. at this yeah again audio only audience we're just oodling over these the, i like pictures what this we're comment said up. open your eyes my friends the future is in the past yeah. yes there yeah. you go it's this idea of uh, entropy, right? right that we're right, not right. the best thing. We're it, not no, going up no, for exactly. the most part. Right. 
it's so interesting that it seems to have gotten to a point and I don't consider myself in one of the whatevers, but it seems to have gotten to a point where you make society so whatever, you mm -hmm. know, dumb, let's say, these zombifications, and who knows what they have planned for these folks, whatever they are. But then you have a, a large populace, or at least a handful of us out here going, what the fuck is going on here that are able to find this, that are digging this up, that right. are talking about it, that are showing it. So what's the like point, I suppose? Like, what do they plan to do? What do y'all think? Well, I... It's it, it, as I interpret, it, do their best to make sure none of this comes out and or comes back, and then uh, kind of just let it let it simmer in history and make very subtle alternative, dumbed down or uh, minutia based versions or subversions of what of this, and then from there basically do the whole buy the car rent the battery. Mm. That's mm -hmm. that's if that's just. If you want to blunt what some some of these elements are thinking, in my view, that seems to be the case. I don't see what they what these 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 crappy elements would gain out of bringing this out. No, of course not. And this is the question. So, how far are we going to take this? How how much are we going to let this happen? Right, right. Uh, by the way, yes, the lights from the <laughs> World's Fairs. Yeah, if that's not, for, I mean, and look right here, it's the towers. That's it what it shows I'm, exactly. you exactly how it's oriented. Exactly. Those, I mean, you can, I'm not saying they Seven. are, but you could say again, electrodes, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, so you have the spark gap in between all of them. Then they, as they drop down, you could be withdrawn for power. I'm not saying that's what these were, but it seems like that's something that could have been. God, look well, at the scale. And you know, know, I'd like to take a stab at that, Brandon. It's like, you know, I, I think what you just said there, um, I think as this system continues to collapse and the institutions continue to implode and we become less and less um uh relying on it because we can't depend on it we have to go back to what the alternatives are and so we're re rediscovering holy shit look at what they had in the past and so maybe this is a good segue moment to right. say that i'm working with the rife machine which all we explain for those that uh, don't aren't familiar well, I'm, I'll explain what I can, and then I'm going to hand the baton, maybe Dave to you, um, sure. Brandon to you, you know, uh, to maybe explain further how it actually works, because that's one of the questions that I had coming into this. Um, so I guess this is my coming out moment on, uh, you know, the, to the podcast world is that a month and a half ago, um, uh, well, the Reader's Digest version of it is that I've got uh, pancreatic cancer. And so um, this has just been unfolding over the last month and a half, and it's just been a big shock and uh, to me, to my family, and just like a lightning bolt, you know, speaking of thunderbolts, you know, just out of nowhere, and it hit us really hard. So that's why I haven't been doing much of, you know, the podcasting world lately, and why I'm really appreciative of being here with you guys and spending time. So my speech is a little halted because um, I have to strain a little extra to muster the energy. Um, so a, a dear, dear friend of mine uh, who's a naturopath in Ellensburg, Washington, uh, has a, a rife machine, which he loaned to me. And so uh, in addition to doing the, you know, the mainstream protocol, I'm doing as much as I can with you know, the, the naturalistic, uh, you know, supplements and, um, part, part of this side of things is working with this rife machine that he loaned me. And I've done a couple of sessions so far, and now I'm in this every other day, um, uh, regimen, and I'm just going to continue. I'm going to continue for the next six months while, while they do the chemo and I might have to deal with surgery. I don't have to get into all that too bad right now. Um, but it's just what I'm looking forward to. Um, and I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited to be able to actually take something of like Tesla tech and apply it directly to my life that might make a difference for me, uh, between, you know, um, well, it's going to give me a better chance. Let me just right. put it that way right. of, of getting this um, uh, out of my system. And I know that I will. I have no question that I will. I just have right. so much support and so much love and, and it's just been incredible. Um, so the Rife machine is uh, working with, as I understand it, plasma 
uh, technology. There's a plasma tube on it, and it's using somehow electromagnetic frequencies. Um, Dave, I, correct me all sure, over the place if here. You want, I can, I can, sure, I can jump in. Basically, do it. There are many different versions. Many people have made their own and different interpretations. Mm. There's some that also have the uh, the the Tesla healing box stuff, where you you know you go and you uh, they they have like this um, uh, plasma. What's it called? Uh, like sort of. Uh, xenon light bulb type looking thing that's kind of put all over the body and it cures them at, at, if if not permanently at the very least temporarily people gotta whether it's with cancer depression or any type of physical ailment people go back once a month to get it whether it's with blindness they can see again the idea is essentially which rife was on to in my opinion which i agree with which is essentially the there there is a magneto acoustic resonance that is within the ether or the vacuum that is that is through and like the same way a spring is connected to other springs like slinkies mm. is linked essentially to our internal nervous system that below that has sort of like a a sub manifold structure to it that is electrical in nature and that when you use magnetism to confine the device or the energies in a certain sort of cavity like way towards the body what happens is this uh, this natural blueprint of reality then resets itself um, sort of like how a film reel, if it's all damaged, it can then, it, you can sort of like, you know, you tape it back together or whatever. This brings out a whole new copy of that film reel. If you think about film reels inside of your genes or genomes. And so what happens is, is that there's more than one method to this, but basically it speaks to the idea of either zapping or restoring through basically topology, higher symmetry, electromagnetics your your genomes back to the way they were and your body knows this not only because it has the immune system actually is this is not i don't know if it's public or not but the immune system has its so it, um is sort of like its own uh, organ which has its own memory which allegedly connects to this electrical database which some have argued is the akashic records or not it's not for me to say but basically taps this and essentially either zaps whatever ailment you have out of the genome and then gives it a fresh start or if you have for example on a say each cell think about each cell in our body as a stack of books we think of it as just one but within it speaks to fractality within the cell say it's comprised of 10 books and right now book number 10 is what is in this material reality and it's filled with cancer these devices were able to say take book two which was at a point in time when book 10 book two is a version of book 10 but just in the past when book 10 was healthy and you take book two and bring it up to book 10 and replace it so many questions, right? So, so many questions, and I love this, uh, Matthew. Oh. Are you cool with me? Just actually, if I can say very quickly, please. there was a gentleman, Doctor <laughs> Peter Garyev, that was um, uh, mysteriously died. He was nominated for this stuff for the Nobel Prize in 2021, and then it was mysteriously retracted. He had a something called linguistic wave genetics because he found that through magnetism and lasers and audio and RF frequency, RF frequency can be subbed out for sound, so you don't have to use both. Um, he found that basically words have restorative memory in them that can also cure people and other things like that. And they basically would do things like get pictures from when people were sick, people were kids and healthy, and then even audio clips and play them during the medical sessions in combination with certain methods like this. So there's more than one. I'm not claiming to know all of them, but I understand the, the concept in terms of how they operate. And I'm just being super vague here on it, but that's the gist of it. First of all, amazing. Generation Z slash Patreon, Patreon slash Generation Z <laughs> located down there as well. Yeah. Matthew, thank you so much uh, for saying what you said, for showing up here. Yes. We know that your physical body on book 10 um, is doing what it's doing right now. Um, for whatever reason, you've been offered this experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, I do want to say, though, because you, you didn't, and that's just who you are, that there is a GoFundMe set up for you and your family that we would also, it's linked below, guys. Check it out. Your wife set it up. She's amazing. So uh, my sister uh, set that sister up. Sister set it up. Okay. Yes. Apologies. My dear shout sister. Out. Shout out. Uh, shout out to Mary Carol. Thank Mary you. Carol, shout out, darling. Uh, that is going to be located down there. And just thank you. So wanted to make sure that we said that and that we're we're all here for you. Okay. Yes, yeah. And thank of course, you, every, all the ways to find Matthew, um, his website and the YouTube are going to be located down below as well. Shoot him a message, guys. Let him know that um, how you feel. So 
in this, Dave, yes. uh, what you talked about is the architecture behind everything, like this idea that when amputees or something experience uh, a loss of a limb, that they feel this phantom limb. Right. Do you think that that's what's tapping in the nervous system, sort of remembering that there's something there? Yeah, that's the that this this speaks to like the Luke Montagnier DNA the phantom DNA experiment that he did in 2010 that he was told not to publish, and then just with some water and some copper and some uh, RF frequencies. <laughs> And some electrical impulse into the co he basically transported DNA into another jug of water, which didn't, which was that spooky action at a distance and stuff. So the idea is that if you could do that, then you could do a form of what you could call organic grafting, where you're basically taking nice fresh DNA from someone else or what have you in a jar of water, and then you put someone else in a p particular. Uh, location that can then facilitate the replacement of those cells replacing the cancer ones and it's all it's not invasive nothing because that's your spooky action at a distance right yes I, Im immediately so i go to then why is any resource necessarily flushed out because if you can have access to any resource ever like yeah let's say book one or two of earth yeah. had a ton of trees and shit on it right oh why is it flushed out it, yeah. that's just the perception of time in a linear right. manner that's why yeah is it this entropy thing we're talking it's about it's the entropy thing okay. but it doesn't mean that it's gone it just means that we don't perceive it in the moment anymore like time but it's exactly which speaks to what you call potentials in the vacuum or, the, or slash the ether but you can extract it from from uh from the quote unquote past, if you will, but it's not really the past. It's always been there. This resonant. Yes. It's resonant constantly. That's why uh, not to get, get off track, but that's, that's also what's led to things like, uh, there was an Italian article in the sixties. I think it was that said that the VAT quick publication and retraction saying that the Vatican had a, a device that could see into the past because the past is not really the past. Everything is now. Right. So then you can take that same mm -hmm. application. So if book one to 10 is no longer a cancer cell, it's a timeline. So if we're on book 10, you can bring book two back to that screen on your device. So then does he think like book two Matt did? Does he fart like book two Matt did? Does his taste change? Does he you no, know, no, play no, an it's, instrument it's that he hasn't picked up? Because it is Matt. This is the question though, is like how, what if, what is it, what of it does it affect? So what we're talking about here as well is that Killian, Carillion photography, right? Sure, Where sure. you can cut a leaf and you can see the... Yeah, uh, yeah, design yeah. of the leaf that you've cut. So there is a right. complete, let's say, leaf there, leaf, yeah. which yeah. then we can scale that up to anything. Right. So if we're talking about then removing cancer from the body, where does that fall into the uh, work with water and work with disease in the body being really a mental thing? Because then if you brought book two, Matt, here, he wouldn't think the same. He would be thinking book two thoughts because he wouldn't have created book two, didn't create the disease in the body. So the question is, is that how disease is created? Because we've just talked about that if it's a reset of sorts, the mind is what would be controlling the physicality of the body. This is where you go. This goes right to something that uh, has been largely controversial. And I, because of this reason and others, I think the... It, it's exactly that, basically. You it's can, paradox. It's paradoxical, mm -hmm. and it's something that actually that professor, Dr. Peter Garriev, actually spoke to as well. So you're not, I, I would I'm going to go off on, on a show sometime, because I've uh, come to a lot of <clears throat> feelings about this place and right, this reality right. and sort of paradox and all that shit. I'm not going to do it on this one, but we'll, we'll talk about it at some point. But it's fascinating. So what you're saying here is that you can get this thing, which resembles what... I guess the Mormons talk about an E or Scientology talks about an E meter, right? Right, right, right. Where right. they hold this thing, they hold the two wands, and those folks are able to tell. It looks exactly like this. The photo idea here. as well, by the way, the energy in terms of if people say, well, you can't ever destroy energy because it can't be created or destroyed, just recycled. Well, in that regard, I would say, sure, if you're zapping out the cancerous energy within a cell or a genome or what or a tumor or what have you, it, the same way that for, for those listening or watching, the same way that uh, you have like a alpha decay or beta decay in a nuclear system, how it just kind of decays into the ether and it's still there but it it either becomes something else or resonates into the ether sort of like how a fly just flies off and that's yeah, it. smoke that's the right smoke it's the same thing in this regard as well you just have just have a sort of zapping off of it and the energy has just gone into the ether and has now taken its own path of being appropriately reset as well god you know it's you know what i thought of when you're talking about this is claymation okay oh yeah yeah so yeah. claymation yeah. stop yeah. animation right they yeah. use this the same bit of clay, right? But they mold it into different things. So it's a this pose now, and maybe now it's a horse in another shot instead of this guy that they use, right? But that clay, same material used to make that one figure is now in another shot, something yes. else has been yes. reorganized. Yeah. But that doesn't take away 
the fact that that once existed right. in that mold it's, and there's an image of it to mm -hmm. prove it which goes which goes right back to the everything is happening all at once simultaneously because it goes right back to again what you just described there is literally how you could remove for a case in a cancer cell or for example have what the that article discussed about viewing another point in time you just would have to take this device to the area in which the certain events you want to view the past of allegedly occurred and then you can see all the events that occurred because of the entropy in that particular spot. So like, we like you can tell how old the tree is by how much it's grown. It, it, you could you could uh, to the point where if properly developed, you could see on the screen a tree that th that tree or that spot where the tree is now up to millions of years ago because time's not a thing. Yeah, I thought about right? this. Mary so, and I Mary and I have talked about this. Uh that when we make changes out here on the ranch, like yeah. we just did a huge cleanup thing. We got that damn light out, which is great. Right, right. So we call those like timeline markers for us. And we think that this is right. this is one of the concepts talked about with the Simpsons that yes. Matt Groening has access to this yellow cube. And the reason the characters are yellow is because of the inference that it's the yellow cube device that he's using to make all these crazy predictions that are well there's a lot of to be to be fair there's a lot of people out there that uh that will say that have leaked that quantum computers are exactly that except we're they're just scaled down publicly like the ibm public one in here in the south is scaled down or scaled back um yeah it's been in 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 actual facilities and actual you have these apparently these blue orbs coming out of them following the scientists around the blue orbs are conscious the, the this whole notion of that of yeah interacting directly with the ether or parts of it and under yeah and being able to do exactly what you said apparently that's why again ask someone what a quantum computer is very few people know it's just they, they know that it's something better <laughs> yeah well quantum's thrown around and that's a right right nobody knows what the hell quantum is anyway right uh, a couple i mean you could say it's the smallest packet of matter or information uh you know the quanta of something but at the end of the day it's been so arbitrarily thrown around and for, in my opinion deliberately so as to just you know intimidate people and go you know you look at a physical a physics article and you see quantum and you see lasers and you see scientists in a lab and you see these words like qubit or whatever and oh my god okay listen i don't i can't get into this because by the time i even think i'll get it it'll be time for work anyway so just kind of let the guys that know what they're doing do it right and that's that speaks to the system in general so, so I, I got a big follow-up question to what you were raising before brandon um, but you guys want to see this machine? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I have more questions about it, honestly, because how long have you been working with it? Have sure, you sure. noticed yeah. any changes? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll, you I'll, show you, I'll show you the setup and um, <clears throat> and then we can keep chatting about it. Um, so here's, uh, tell me when it comes up. Look at that handsome fella. Yes. Oh, yeah. nice socks, dude. This, <laughs> yes, this yes. I, um, yeah, sort of drained expression. Um, forgive me. I've got cancer. <laughs> so no you're temporarily <laughs> accessing cancer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm interacting with it. There you go. You're flipping so it off. Here I thought, um, this in this machine, again, my 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 dear friend Jeff that uh naturopath that loaned this to me, bless his heart. Um here I thought that this thing was just killing cancer cells. I had mm. a very simplistic understanding. I thought it was just zapping the bad stuff, mm. preserving the good. And I didn't quite understand how it did that. But after you said what you said about it, Dave, it's got me really kind of scratching my head. Um, so, and I think this uh, piggybacks off of what Brandon was saying is if like book 10 is like an, maybe like a, a, a version of a, a cell an echo of the cells past sure. but how do we know how does this machine know that that isn't the traumatized cell because for um supposedly i've had this in me for 15 to 20 years unbeknownst to me right wow. that's 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 a good you know third of my life right there right um, 50 so that's a lot of my life that this thing has been incubating and and from what they said you know there's a number of things that can cause pancreatic cancer and i don't fit the bill on most of them you know mm. like obesity, alcoholism heavy tobacco use like you know there's like abusing the body sort of yeah and then the other things can be genetic and we don't really have this in my family at all right and then the other thing can be trauma and i can think back yeah. 20 
15, 20 years ago. And I had a lot of stuff going on yeah. at that time. That was traumatic. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a lot better now, uh, even with the cancer. <clears throat> so it's, I can see that. I can see how these shocks uh, to my sorry, system. Matt, forgive me. You're, you're trying to ask basically, how does it, how would the machines like this or others know to what to reset and what not? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh, what's it? Yeah. Because it's like, dude, I, I like my what, earlobe it's very, that way. It's very it was simple. Fine, you because know? Okay. if it needs to reset to basically the without getting too complex, uh, it's not complicated. It's complex. And what I mean by that is, without. Okay, so if it had, let me try and phrase this the right way. If uh, if they were by definition of them being cancerous, they mm -hmm. they it kills life at a very small fractal level. So by definition of life being life, it, if it was it meant, doesn't fit. it doesn't fit. So it, that's how it essentially, it, no, if that makes sense. It removes what's no longer I'm, needed. I'm trying to simplify you know I mean? all the physics terms and stuff very quickly at the top of my well, head, it, but that's, that's- And this would answer questions. So it's, it's life threatening things. So right. if you have gray hair, just naturally because of aging, it's not going to make you look like Brad Pitt in his right. 20s. Okay. Right, right, and it's right. not going to do the time machine thing where you show up as a baby. Right. Okay. Right. So what it's doing is, is it's just taking healthy and rebalancing you to where you should be health wise. But then the question is, if you rebalance your shit health electrically, wise, electrically, okay. electromagnetically, it's essentially removing what's not supposed to be there. And the way that it knows what's not supposed to be there versus what is, is literally the existence of life itself. So if there's a, if there's a detection, the same way that when you get close to a person, this person has a great vibe or this person, holy crap, their vibe is terrible. Think about that on the electron, proton, neutron, that kind of level. Mm. And what essentially happens in the cells is by definition, if uh, the same, just like a one and a zero, the ones know that the zeros are zero because by definition, they're not ones. Right. And right. That, yeah. It's a, it's more <laughs> simplistic. I see. And I have all the, like, what's now, going the on? Book, the book stacking it. thing. And I want to be very clear. I, I, I hope this, I'm sure this is a fantastic machine. I just don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know for a fact that these machines also do the book stacking thing. The book stacking thing is mm -hmm. a little bit more of a complicated situation, but the zapping and all of that, just by being in the same room as it, it, what we just discussed, the ones know that the zeros are zeros because they're not ones by definition. That's what seems to be what's happening here. Well, it's a pretty serious piece of machinery. I yeah. mean, if you've got to put it on one of those carts that we used to get wheeled in a TV and VCR in yes. when we were in, in yeah. school, right? When the teacher was gone. That's a there's serious a piece of machinery. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. yeah. So this manual that I've, I'm thumbing through right now, there's there's all these preset uh, functions. And it's, it reminds me of the books, the the books that we had when we were kids on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. You just mm. go by step by step by step right. in the right order. And so then you have the frequency, you know, it's, set frequency meter here and then the right frequency dial. And then this was bang, you know, gizmo at the bottom. Um, and, and you have to just go through, this is the, oh, what do you call it? Generator. Um, forgive me. I don't know. No worries. Follow no the worries. instructions. It's got the UV it's, component. You know, if well, I could say light. the UV component. Yep. I, I was going to say as well. Think for a moment, guys, to, to answer your guys' question. It's kind of like saying, how does water know when it's not in water? Because by definition, it's not. And then once it's out of water, it's, it gets dry, if that makes sense. It's a more of a mind fuck, but it does make it's, sense. Yeah. I'm like, not, it's more I, trippy. It's, it's tri more of like a stoner well, it's, thought. It's paradoxical. Thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking doxical. Yeah. Because by, defini no, by definition, it knows it's not. And how do you know that? Well, depending how deep we want to go, just like Richard Feynman says, there comes a point where we don't know crap about crap yeah. we, we don't have an adequate definition of force we don't know what energy is after you get past the electron we don't know well is it so, because of this idea that we're creating it as we go kind of a thing and uh, so part, we don't that's, know that's part of it we haven't created the, it yet the, yeah the idea as well is without veering off track too much here is uh with what what great stuff matt is showing us is that electromagnetism electricity and magnetism are two two energies rep two energies that represent excuse me two representative energies of the same underlying force. Okay. Because by definition, you have to have two of something starting out because with that, with just one, you have no focal point or pillar to compare it to. Yeah, relativity. Relativity. What's the yeah, underlying exactly. force? Like I'm here, you're there, that's, Matthew's that's over there. A great, that's a great question. You can, some people, again, I'm not saying, I don't know what it is. So you can, what we know is that it exists, but some have called it the ether, the isness, the, you know. Uh, quantum foam. Quantum foam, uh, whatever. Yeah, magic. It's hard to say. Hmm. So with the ether, when I hear the ether, there's like, I think of it in two 
you know, two, two layers. There's the materium and then there's the consciousness aspect. I of completely it. agree. The non-material. Yeah. Is, is there, is there in your, to your knowledge, is, is there like a succinct way to define what the ether is though? Great question. Um, mm. To a certain extent, but then there comes a point where there's layers to the ether, like an onion. It's not just one swimming pool. It's swimming pools and swimming pools inside of swimming pools. Cause it makes up everything. Because so it's it, like trying to observe time in a right. world that operates on time. Right, right. It's like saying, can an onion just have one layer? Well, then it wouldn't be an onion. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You see what that's, that's probably the best way I can put it without getting all fancy talk or, you know, uh, condensed matter physics, <laughs> quantum chromodynamic talk is, and all of that. Is there, is there an accepted, um, I know accepted definition is probably not the right question, but is, is there an operating definition not, amongst people working in like, you know, your field for not, pub not publicly, mm -hmm. uh, classified. Yeah. <laughs> but not publicly. You because, don't get it because again, if it, if it were a, if there were right. a working definition that the mainstream scientific system approved of, if you will, then you would go right back to all these scientists around the world having the creativity and inspiration and passion of the people that built the pneumatic stuff, and then you'd have a problem again because then the system couldn't control them. Nice callback. Way to wrap right. it all home. You know well, what I mean? Well, it's the same playbook every freaking time. That's the problem. It's true. So where's the whistle so whistle now we know in the alternative right? scientific field to just come out and say, hey, guys, this is what the ether is. Where's the, sorry? The whistleblower. The whistleblower. Oh, <laughs> there have been many of them. A lot of them have unfortunately died. There's a, a few that are still alive. But I mean, for example, uh, I can give an example. Tom Bearden was screaming about it since the 70s all the way up until he died a couple of years last year. He was did videos, put them all out there. This kind of did spoke at events before the internet came out. There have been people, but again, it's, it speaks to the suppression of the system. If, if mm -hmm. people haven't seen it, then they don't think it's there. And understandably so. Um, it's like the same way when people say, and I don't mean this towards you, Matt, but when people say, well, how come there aren't any, anyone, uh, if this UAP stuff was all real, then how come there haven't been people in the past talking? They, there have been. Like, I can give 10 names off the top of my head right now. There have been. You, you know, like Don, Don, like these guys with credentials that you wouldn't believe. So it's either they're bullshitting when they're about to die because why? Because they want to make money for their kids, even though they're going to die, maybe. But then at the same time, it's, it, I mean, I can go Boyd Bushman, Don Phillips, uh, what's Clifford Stone, I, uh, Phil Schneider. I can just keep, uh, uh, what's his name there? Um, anyways, yeah, I'm really tired right now. Sorry, John guys, Burrish. I mean, a lot John, of those John, guys. Yeah. John Burr. I mean, and it's an interesting thing because you see the main points consistently spoken across all these different, th you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Philip Corso, mm. uh, this kind of stuff. So there have been people, there have been people. Um, but is that some sort of even surface level campaign that was sure. always running that they knew they, whatever they you could is. have, you, you have people, for example, that know a lot more than what they're letting on, but they put in their books only so much or their interviews only so much because they themselves feel like that people aren't ready for it. And that's another debate too. Who, who are they to say? Yeah. And so, no, it's, it's true. Well, this goes right back to the whole thing of like, you know, these whistleblowers, whether it's for cancer or anti-gravity or whatever, have come out and written books and all of that. But the, the thing is, and this is where you kind of get it back and forth and then I'll, I'll stop after this, but people say, well, if there's one thing you find in their book, that's not true or misleading or something, how can we believe them? And I say to that, absolutely correct. And for some reason you still go home and believe CNN because they have retractions every other week. So on page 50, on page 50, after they've ruined somebody's exactly. life. Exactly. Yeah. So I, what I say to that is it's a fair point, but this goes both ways. No matter what. And so. two, though, those missing parts of the equation are really hints that they can't give that piece, but there's only a couple of issues. So if you're only finding one or two issues, yeah. maybe that that's left in there deliberately. Uh, there's a there's something Bud Hopkins talks about in his right. books as well about right. like, hey, there's parts of the cases that are ubiquitous but and very consistent, but yeah. I don't publish them because right. Right. I don't want anyone being able to fake this or it's sort of my metric kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. And yep. so you need to like earn it almost. So that's you know? why when people say, well, I can't believe this person because, you know, even though what they said in their book, 95 percent of it lines up with what others have said, even in previous generations or even more recent ones, because the five percent, you know, they got up in their feelings or their ego and they wanted to make up a story because it made them look, seem cool or whatever. No problem. But if that's the case, then you have to go home and you have to cancel your cable and all of that, because on that principle alone, you should not be listening to any media source because they retract constantly. 
It's the Bill Hicks so, thing. If you don't yeah. think drugs have done good things for you, go right. home tonight and right. take all your albums, all right. your CDs, all your right. tapes, and burn them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, all those exactly. people that you love for exactly. real fucking Ex high on this drugs. Is, this is what I'm saying. Exactly. So the same people that say, I've never seen a UAP or you know this stuff in the, the Antiquitech, it's not possible or whatever. Say, you know, you, I've said this to someone, you like football? They go, yeah. When was the last time you've been to a game? Well, I've never been. How do you know the games are real? My man. It's yeah. the same logic under the, well, uh, it's real. It's real. How? I've been to a game. Uh, the simulation uh, uh, rendered it for me. Right. No, no, I know what <laughs> you're saying, but yeah. I'm just trying to make but a point. But I don't if it's not there. Well, I I'm get just, it. I'm just trying to make a point. Yeah. Well, we talk about yeah. like China's not a thing right now. You know what I mean? And into a degree. If and you want to look at like reality well, from that perspective. Well, this is why, I, to your point, and to your point as well, Matt, I don't blame people when, for example, you see an event happen, good or bad, and people spend the next 10 years on Twitter debating if it actually happened or if it was done on a soundstage. Yeah. I don't blame people. I don't. That's why, my, that's why I respect a lot of what you do here in terms of not watching the news and stuff, because it's just it, it, you're going to spend your entire day figuring out what's good versus not good and that's a great way to dis, dis, uh, distract people because before when they were just constantly working right we, before you had phones the work was enough of a distraction but now people can work and be on their phones so what do you got to do you got to up the level of the chess game from the negative elements that are playing it so now you you see people are now busy debating and getting into freaking twitter wars over gotcha type statements and now no one's actually getting anywhere. There's little bubbles. So these whirlpools of constant, energy suck. Constant, and it's just like, yeah. yeah, people get stuck there. Constantly. I mean, they, we did, we saw this with the, a lot of narratives where they'll give you some sort of surface thing. Yeah. And then a lot of folks will get stuck there. And yes. then it turns so many, like 95%. Dude, like you I, said. I had a similar discussion. Sorry, this is just getting me going because I had a similar discussion with a very close family friend some months ago. And I just talked, I used the same statement about the, you know, CNN or other media outlets retracting, right? And they said, no, that's BS or whatever. I sent them full on lawsuits. I said, I literally sent them the actual lawsuits. I sent them peer reviewed papers on some other things we were talking about. Uh, and basically they refused to even look at them. Yeah. They just said, stop with your BS. I said, these are lawsuits from top lawyers. These are peer reviewed papers from what are considered to be highly respectable, uh, respected medical professionals in, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and what have you, you won't, they won't even look at them. It's like there's this invisible wall where if, you know, CNN mm -hmm. didn't, didn't tell them, then no. It's not on TV. Yeah. 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 Which gets it's, back to resonance and vibration. They exactly. just cannot vibe with the truth that you're presenting. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And who knows what you're presenting is the truth, you know, because yeah. it's your truth, because their truth. And then that's the whole, the whole, and we'll go over truth yep. on another episode. But guys, Matthew, if you did, if you want, man, I'm going to give you the last uh, yeah, please, on this please. anyway. But if you had any more questions, um, absolutely pass them out. But I definitely want to just remind everybody, check the show description down there. Not only audio, only audience for the pictures and stuff. We're having a good time with it. Check for the video version of this and you can share in that. Uh, as well as Matthew's GoFundMe, yes. absolutely. And all the ways to find him and his incredible yeah. work. As well as Dave and all his work and how to find him, Patreon slash Generation Z, all of it linked below. Thank you both gentlemen again. And then I'm going to get out of your way and let you guys close it out. Well, thank yeah. you. I've done enough, enough talking, so I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm always fascinated listening to you, Dave. Um, thank you, you man. Such thank a wealth you. of knowledge. And, and as far as questions, you know, how does a Rife machine work and what is the ether? I think pretty much covers it. So sure. I, I mean, I'm that's good. the most I could probably describe without having to start pulling out papers and, you know, talking to <laughs> all this stuff. So, well, I'm going to yeah. go back and listen to this episode again and, uh, you awesome. know, really, yeah, sink into awesome. it. Um, it's, you know, I, I, just I try to understand this stuff as well as I can, but at the end of the day, if it's working, great. If it's helping right. me, if 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 we're finding as you know the world does what the world's going to do around us and right. becomes less dependable, um, as it's trying to make us more dependent on it. Um, right. Speaking yeah. of paradox, you know, and, and we find that these old technologies are useful again to us. I think mm. you know, let's just go for it man. and right. that's why because it's going to make the world a better place the new world that we're creating together so i'm so excited that you know there's folks like you out you fellows are fantastic i'm honored to be plugged in to what you've got going on thank you brandon for bringing me into this and um yeah this has been great this is the most podcasting i've done in the last month and a half so thank it's, you thank you it's guys. great it's to been, be without back. without you matt we wouldn't be here so thank you so much it's been fantastic and cheers to both of you thank um, you my work, you know, again, dreamdesignbuild.org for my architecture work. Marvelous old world. Um, I'll put this up, Brandon, whenever you say it's okay. And, um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of irons in the fire. I've already, before all this, I had more ideas than time. 
but um, maybe as a result of this, you know, there's going to be some, you know, priority shifting and, and I'm able to do to keep up with my research. So I've just got I, I, I've got piles of research that I really, you know, have to want to convert into um, presentable format because it's exciting stuff that I'm discovering. And a lot of it goes back to Kelly's Melted Bricks. So I'm going to be getting back together with her and continuing that exploration um, moving forward. So, yeah, lots more to come. Thank you so much. And um, I look forward to next time. <laughs>